Okay, folks, this is going to be a very interesting teaching. And if you've not seen this or heard about this, it's going to be super intriguing for you to hear about this. And I call this the Sodom Apple located in Israel. Now, before I begin to show you something we came across at the Dead Sea in Israel during a trip, I need to explain to you what the word Sodom is and where it's found. In, in Genesis chapter 14, verses 1 through 2, the, the scripture tells us that there were five cities in the time of Abraham and his nephew Lot that were located in what's called the Plain, which was a valley uh, south of the Dead Sea in Israel. Now, those five cities are named. They are Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom is one. Gomorrah, twin cities, Sodom and Gomorrah. Adma, Zebuim, and a very small one named Zoar. For a brief period of time, the nephew of Lot, I'm sorry, the nephew of Abraham named Lot, lived in the area in the city of Sodom. Um, in Genesis chapter 14, Abraham had to rescue Lot when he was taken captive by the king of the nations. Then he had to intercede for Lot to prevent his destruction and premature death in Genesis 18. The city of Sodom and, of course, Gomorrah was destroyed by fire in Genesis chapter 19. And also, um, our biblical account of Sodom and Gomorrah is Genesis 14, Genesis 18, Genesis 19. However, there are uh, historical sources uh, recorded by the uh, uh, Jewish historian Josephus, and there is also a book by the name of Yasher, uh, or Jasher, it's spelled J-A-S-H-E-R in the English translation of our Bible. It is alluded to in Joshua 10, 13, and 2 Samuel chapter 1 and 18, and although that book is not in Scripture, the a copy of that book was discovered in a monastery in Sinai, Mount, in the Mount Sinai area, in the 1800s, and in about 1840, and later was translated by a British scholar. Now, in that book, I'm going to read this story to you that is in that book because the Bible says, is this not written in the book of Jasher? And it alludes to the book of Jasher twice. So this is found in a translation of a book of Jasher that was found in a monastery. It's, it's Jasher 2, 20 through 21, and it talks about Sodom and Gomorrah. In fact, in Jasher, it's really interesting. It gives you tons of information about Sodom and Gomorrah that, it, that, that is not totally detailed, for example, uh, by Moses in the book of Genesis. And here's a quote. The sons of men began to transgress the commandments which he had commanded Adam to be fruitful and multiply. Some of the sons of men, and these are men, caused their wives to drink a draught that would render them barren in order that they might retain their figures and whereby their beautiful appearance might not fa fade. And this is in, I'm not saying this, this is in quotes how the men felt. This is in parenthesis. For childbearing women were looked upon as abominable. So the, the idea is that they had a system set up which would be a, a type of an abortion to where the woman would miscarriage the, chi the child. So that brings me to the Sodom apple. We were at the Dead Sea many years ago with my tour guide, wonderful tour guide, Gideon Shore. And we came, I was taping, um, let's see, the teaching was a journey through the underworld about the, the Dead Sea and the underworld and the fire underneath the Dead Sea. Very interesting teaching if you've never heard it. And I came across this tree, so I, I noticed when I pressed it, it just, it kind of puffed and this powder came out. And he stopped me. He said, don't, don't touch that. He said, don't put your fingers in your mouth. And I said, why? He said, because that's called the Sodom apple. And I said, but it's not really an apple. It does it. No, he said it, it's green and it looks like an apple, an apple, but there's a milky substance inside that can actually be poison and it can cause a woman to miscarriage. So I did a little research about that and I won't go into detail about the research, but then I began to think about, and I want you to hear me for just a moment, how here we have another amazing parallel of as it was in the days of Lot, so will it be at the time of the coming of the Son of Man. Where's that at? That's in Luke's Gospel, and that is a statement made by Jesus himself. So going back to Sodom and Gomorrah, we find a, a reference in secular history and it is a religious reference of how that they made the women uh, in Lot's day, and this was not Lot, these were men of Sodom, drink something that would cause them to lose their babies so that they would not lose their figure or lose their beauty. 
that to me is parallel. I'm, I'm, I'm just giving you my opinion of, of the uh, warning of Deuteronomy 19.10 of shedding innocent blood and goes back to the legalized abortion in the United States. So if you look at, because I always said, you know, well, abortion was, is a big issue, but where is it in the days of Noah and where is it in the days of Lot? Now, if you look at some of the history, that you can research out something happened to cause the women to lose their children. And I wanted to share that with you because I thought that's very, very intriguing. So when we talk about uh, as it was in the days of Noah and Lot, what we have to realize is that there's many things in the scripture that we have to dig up and dig out from the Hebrew, from the original text. There are also statements made in secular history. There's statements, statements in Jewish history, rabbinical history, or rabbinical, rabbinical commentary on words that when you start seeing it, you get a very large view and a wide understanding of more of the signs of the days of Lot and Noah that are parallel to our day and to our time. So j just let me say very quickly, uh, keep watching the video because we have something special to share with you. And uh, keep, keep up with the YouTube channel. We're going to do a lot of videos. We're going to do some teaching on the uh, manifest telecast as well. And go to perrystone.org and please, please keep up with our conferences that are taking place. And we hope you can come to town, be a part of those, or go to our itinerary, see if we're coming in your area, and at least join us in a service somewhere in the continental United States. Thank you again. Keep watching. God bless you. Humanity's final battle is being set in array, merging men with super advanced technology. Commonly known as artificial intelligence or AI, this new and at times frightening technology is said to be the greatest advancement of man's imagination since the beginning of humanity. But it comes with warnings from experts and developers. While AI can be used to deter crime, track criminals, and search for information at breathtaking speed, AI could eventually take over 80% of human jobs, replacing them with computers and robots. With AI, nothing about your private life, your finances, job, or family will be hidden. In the future, a male or female humanoid robot can become a walking, talking, living companion. Wealthy men are hoping AI will create the possibility of eternal life. According to experts, there are great dangers ahead. Uncontrolled AI systems could eventually destroy humanity. AI could also become a scammer's dream, using fake pictures, videos, voices, and accounts to blackmail innocent victims or transfer funds. In Perry Stone's explosive new prophecy book, Artificial Intelligence vs. God, he reveals what others who have written about AI have missed including five ways in which AI will be brought to utter uselessness in the future as God, the creator of mankind, will have the final say as to when nature itself will release unrestrained destruction that will silence both man's modern technology and the electronic systems required for AI to function. Perry's new book presents stunning quotes, biblical word studies, and ancient history to document all the book's eye-opening information. He explains how an ancient clash in Eden and a massive tower in the plains of Shinar conceal huge historical parallels, repeating themselves during AI development. Perry explores whether the economic mystery Babylon mentioned in Revelation 18 could be the new AI city being planned in Arabia. Is China cryptically alluded to in Revelation 12 by the symbol of the great red dragon? Will men and women marry companion robots in the future? Could the image of the beast in Revelation 13 be an advanced AI creation built to introduce a new religion and to be worshiped as a god? Perry exposes the goal of transhumanism and will shock readers by revealing positive proof of five ways God will allow mankind's most advanced technologies to fail in the future. Perry's new book, Artificial Intelligence vs. God, is now available through Perry Stone Ministries. The offer number is BK-036, and you can request your copy for a donation of $25 or more. Order one of three ways, by calling toll-free at 1-888-21-BREAD. That's 1-888-212-7323, or online at perrystone.org. You may also send your donation of $25 or more to Perry Stone, P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320, and request offer number BK-036. This new landmark book is only available through Perry Stone Ministries. Get your copy today so you and your family are prepared for the future of AI technology. We look forward to hearing from you today. 
If you enjoyed this YouTube content, there's an important website you should know about, perrystone.org. Perrystone.org is an essential resource for the latest books, audiovisual presentations, and digital products from Perrystone Ministries, resources that cover the same kinds of topics discussed in the program you just watched. Stop in and see all that's available at perrystone.org.